Hello, uh, this is Murat Yilmaz from the School of Computing at Dublin City University. Uh, today we'll be talking a little bit more about the Agile software development. And as we previously started to talk about this in the previous lecture, so today we'll be talking about more uh, and uh, the Agile software development versus the waterfall iterative and Agile. As you can see, uh, uh, there are uh, you see three different types of uh, software development methodologies. So the first one is called the waterfall. You already see this in the previous lectures. So what you see here is uh, there is this requirement analysis, design, coding, testing, and implementation. As you see, each phase is being executed completely under the next until the next phase uh, starts. So it's sec quite sequential. But not surprisingly, perhaps, if you look at iterative lifecycle model and agile lifecycle model, you will see uh, these phases as denoted by R R1, D1, C1, T1, and goes further for R2, D2, C2, T2. It goes further like R3, D3, C3, T3. So these are uh, segments or clusters of implementation uh, for uh, a bunch of this uh, sequence of implementation. Uh, in iterative form, as you see, like there are sequential events uh, in terms uh, in in these uh, iterations. Still, it's sequential, but you can segment everything in terms of R1, R2, and R3, and you can go further for D1, D2, and D3, and you can go further for this. Which means that each phase is divided into n more phases, which three in the above diagram. Each phase is executed three times design starts only after the third iteration. So still, this is uh, called iterative lifecycle model. If you look at the third one, the agile lifecycle model, uh, which we can say iterative and incremental, which you can see R1, D1, C1, T1, and I1 in the first sequence uh, segment. Then we go further for R2, D2, C2, T2, and I2. Further, we go for the third and the fourth one uh, and go for the fifth one. The, the agile methodology shows us the implementation happens multiple times, as we mentioned in the previous R, uh, which is incremental. And it's called like uh, what we can say is R1, D1, C1, T1, and I1 is called like iteration one or sprint one in scrum one or whatever you want to call it that way. But you see R1, D1, C1, T1, and I1 can be considered as a single, uh, looks like a, a small waterfall. Uh, analogy, which we can do is if we put uh, an ice cube in the blender and uh, just uh, crunch it with small pieces, think about this ice cube as a waterfall and you just crunch it, you have uh, lots of mini waterfall uh, formation. This is uh, the agile actually. Most importantly at this point, these uh, all uh, iterative and incremental segments done in a time box, which means which means uh, it is a time box event. In iterative life cycle, it can be, but it's not necessarily it should be. It can be depending on your preferences. But if you say I am doing agile, you must understand that you should be doing things in time boxes. So if you look at the traditional versus the agile here, the change management is a process in the traditional way. Like in the agile, actually, change is the part of the system, apart from uh, itself. The philosophy based on embracing the change, as you might remember what Kent Beck says. Uh, in the traditional way, it is plan-driven, everything based on sticking to a plan. In the agile way, what we can say is execution-driven. So everything executed in terms of a way that depending on the requirements or change in the requirements and the execution might differ from the, the initial plan. So this could be taken into consideration on the agile way. In the traditional way, uh, it is an inside approach. Uh, like in the agile way, what we can say it's inside and outside approach. So it is the process is in, uh, usually encompasses several things uh, with respect to the requirements versus all the sequences. In the agile way, you try to think out of the box a little bit more uh, than uh, the traditional conventional way. In the traditional way, we usually have the faith in the process. 
However, in the agile formations, we usually believe the people, uh, we trust them more uh, than the process. So that is an important difference or the aspect that you can consider as well as an agile as well. Well, uh, in the traditional way, technology is driving people. Uh, in the agile way, the goal is the people to drive the technology. So like most of the time, if you look in a conventional way, you select the technology up front, but in the agile way, depending on the new things coming in as a tech or something else, we can change our thinking style with respect to drive the technology more. So in the traditional way, what we can say is the final product is only at the end. So there wouldn't be any uh, sub products or any parts of the product has been produced. I have seen in the industry that there are cases that you can think about this. Mostly what happens is uh, people are using uh, a prototype based design with a waterfall combined together and there would be a product, uh, but these uh, have also drawbacks as well. So the final product here is only at the end as uh, conventionally speaking. So in a traditional way, uh, that is it. But in the agile way, the final product is in uh, all incremental stages. So every stage you have a uh, part of the artifact or part of an artifact itself uh, which was uh, which needs to be executable and then you, uh, your customer would be able to see what's going on well in the traditional way usually it's planned in the same time and the same place big huge offices perhaps is planned that way in the agile way usually it's anywhere and anytime actually so this is like this is quite different from the this perspective well, in the traditional way, the uncertainty not expected most of the time, you think that you trust on your requirements very, very much. So here, uh, but the, in the agile way, you uh, at the first sentences you uh, have uh, when you start your work is to say uncertainty is inevitable. So you start to think about the uncertainty. So uncertainty is quite important for you uh, to deal with. So here you see the project lifecycle with several type of implementation. So there is an incremental final product at the end, uh, according to this, and you can see the iterations based on the requirements and its uh, iterations are usually based on an iteration plan. And most of the time we plan how many iterations do we need to have at first. And these uh, should come from the product backlog, a list of known requirements, and there needs to be a release plan, how you plan to have these iterations and the other stuff. And you can initiate the project as well with respect to that one. So if you look at to the agile process life cycle, what you can see here is uh, you need to have a product vision. You need to have a project release planning. So product backlog also can be considered as the product vision. So there should be a release plan. So product release plan you need to have. There needs to be an iteration planning and then uh, there, uh, daily, based on the iteration planning, there should be an execution of this iteration. And uh, there would be um, a practice that we already previously talked about is daily stand-up meeting. If you, ha you haven't heard about this, it's one of the common ways of Scrum. And so you just uh, make a stand-up meeting with everyone as an execution for the iteration. And then what happens is there's an iteration review after this. And you try to uh, encompass the best practices. You try to grab the best practices and feed it back to the iteration planning. And then you have the re review uh, and then the uh, review uh, finishes with the project release introspection. So this goes further through project release planning and these cycles go further through uh, to build the product actually. So if you look at the, the main difference of the scrum and the waterfall, what we can see is Waterfall ha could have some checkpoints actually. So like Waterfall could have some analysis design coding, testing and operation checkpoints. Uh, like in Scrum, as you see, there would be many checkpoints, which in from engineering perspective, it's important to measure and uh, see the progression. So in the Waterfall checkpoints, uh, the sec uh, usually it happens after the uh, for uh, uh, finishing of the analysis, for example, before the design. So then you have another one after coding, testing and operations, maintenance as well. And you can try to feed forward or feed backward if you can, but most of the time as one of the sequences already finished, there will be overwork and needs to be, uh, there 
if there is an alteration, things might be changed drastically and this could cause problems. However, the most important thing here is like we have short duration benefits, which gives us ease of planning, fast feedback, bounded errors, so that we can say, we can see if there is something going wrong, it is more easy to measure at this point with this more, many checkpoints that we could have. Improved return on investment. So if you think any kind of uh, problems early, then you can steer your direction more easily. And obviously there would be more excitement than this waterfall. Waterfall goes, the sequence are too long. Even uh, you can have a, a three months of analysis perhaps. Then what would happen in the scrum is, or uh, other forms like that could be more excitement. So as frequent checkpoints and releases, you can see or monitor, measure, and uh, measure the product more easily if you know how to measure it, obviously. So in the Scrum, uh, there are th uh, three main roles. There's one Scrum uh, master, and there's, one, uh, there's a development team, obviously, and there's a product owner. Product owner can be someone uh, as from a customer, perhaps, uh, or someone who has a uh, or perhaps one of the stakeholders it can be. And uh, the product owner usually requires some functionality. And the scrum master here is the one who coaches the team and uh, as probably works as one uh, person, one individual involved with the team. And then, uh, well, teams needs to be more self-organized when comparing with the conventional form, but still scrum master uh, tries to steer this direction and development team usually uh, report back to the product owner uh, with the product. It depends on there will be several variants of the scrum, but this is a common abstraction. So there would be sprints that is planned previously. And like here, as you see time box up to a calendar month, this is all the information now, we can say 10 to 15 days now uh, as uh, we need more releases and more start uh, more uh, measurements through the way to understand any kind of problems. Here, what we see in the sprint that there's a start date, there's a fixed length, and there's an end date. So this would be something that is helpful for us to see if uh, the things goes in a time box up to a calendar month. So these goes further through a time box. So as you see, these five four sprints are planned and it goes further in a time scale. So normally in Scrum, there is a product backlog. Uh, you have seen some pictures from the previous slides, as you might remember, and there would be user stories there. And there would be ultimately a sprint backlog, which is derived from the product backlog and feed into the system. So in the product backlog, there would be the feature A, B, and C. And what to do is to we take these things and put into sprint planning uh, and the team decides, uh, um, uh, the customer and the team collectively decides what's going on, what should it be. And there would be a sprint backlog here. So, and then uh, the sprint backlog divided into tasks and plan how to do it. Sprint planning is the first part of every sprint. So you do the sprint planning every time. So after that, you, you just identify which feature should be developed first. And it should be broken into the set of tasks, as you see here. For example, coding the UI, test automated tests, creating the database could be based on hourly basis tasks. So uh, there's each task has an effort hour estimate on the top of this. And could be assigned to someone or could be done in pairs, could be done in uh, different forms depending on the team's decisions. So that would be in the second feature B, let's say in the second feature, we can see add error logging, creating icons, buffer tests that could also be done by interdisciplinary cross-disciplinary teams that also be involved with the Scrum. And the feature C shows us like uh, installation and perhaps like automated tests. And each release, each feature here, each sprint needs to have an executional product. So an artifact, we, let's say, uh, a product piece, which needs to be executed at the end. So let's see the user stories and the requirements actually. So user stories versus the traditional requirements. Here, what we can say, the user stories are lean, accurate, just in time, and traditional requirements might be more heavy, inaccurate, and out of date. User stories encourage face-to-face -face communication for details. Well, uh, normally traditional requirements might come up with false assumptions. 
which you need to do some guessing at this process, during the process. User story is a way to do simplified planning, while traditional requirements needs heavy documentation with complex planning. User stories could be considered as cheap, easy, and uh, easy to create, and fastly you can create more faster. So in a traditional form, there is, it's expensive, slow, and it is hard to create. User stories could, uh, as uh, well, it should be considered as living uh, bits and pieces of a document. So it shouldn't never be out of the date. And traditional, on the other hand, uh, could come out of the date because as the sequence of uh, the first requirement phase, long three months phase would be far, far away from us and things might change while we start to, to design. So that could be one of the other cases. So based on the latest learnings, the user stories will be, uh, while the traditional ones will be perhaps based on little or no learning. So you just finished this long time ago and you don't learn from the customer on from uh, several things on the way through. So this has this kind of drawback as well. So user stories enables real time feedback. So it could be a little bit like a living document and the traditional requirements, it is disabled the real time feedback. This has already been done, documented and finished. So user stories avoid false sense of accuracy. So it's, it should be testable and uh, each piece uh, when becomes an ar executable artifact is tested by the user so that you know the problems if there, is, there are any. So in the traditional form, uh, it promotes a sense of uh, false sense of accuracy, which when you finish up the sequence after three months of time, for example, you believe that everything is in order, but uh, there would be several problems later on, which you don't really know about it at that time. So let's think about how we write a user story. So think about like, we usually need to have one of the actors here as a type of user. I want to perform some tasks so that I can achieve some goal, benefit or value. User story cards are index cards that hold the user story. Index card information might include format information, ID, short description, type, exploration factor. So uncertainty, would it be a problem or not uh, during the development? So given when format is given some context uh, can be uh, when some action is carried out, then a particular set of observable consequences should result. Given that my bank account is in credit and I made no withdrawals recently, when I attempt to withdraw an amount less than my card's limit, then the withdrawal should be complete without errors or warnings. This is another kind of formula that can be used for user stories as well. There is, a, uh, there is uh, a uh, term which is used, like there are a set of terms which is used uh, as known as invest with the first letters. So what it means like, like uh, the first I represents the independency. So they do not overlap and can be planned and implemented in any order. So this is what called the user stories needs to be done. Uh, the, it should be negotiable. So agile requirements are always based on negotiation. You don't really dictate a requirement. Uh, and this should be done uh, with the product owner or business. So we need to use user stories that we are able to discuss with the others. Oh, so it should be valuable. So the user stories must have a uh, real value, size and a contact so that business receives a value at the end from the user stories. Sometimes more user stories may be needed but only user stories that are valuable to the business needs to be developed. And it should be also estimable. So which means that you could be able to estimate the size, the team will be estimate and plan it accordingly. It should be on the right size. Being too big would often require additional breakdown or splitting. So that could be one of the uh, things you need to consider when you're having your user story. Good user stories are usually small, to the point being taken make easier to work with and all user stories must be tested and tested early but by the end users otherwise uh, we didn't we just uh, we couldn't be able to follow the term testable story points are the measure used by the scrum teams this is used to measure the effort required to implement a story 
In simple terms, it is a number that tells the team how hard the story is. How could be related to the, its complexity, unknowns, and the, perhaps the effort as well. So that would be a reference story uh, as an actor I want to do so that I could be able to achieve something. So it could be three, five, eight, and 20, like uh, as you see, uh, as they are the story points as here as an example. So all accepted stories must fit in a single sprint. So your velocity is a range that represents the team's capacity for each iteration, actually. If your team velocity is 40, 50 story points per sprint, then you could accept five or six point stories, accept uh, two 20 point stories, accept one 40 point story. Stories should be decomposed until they are 13 points or less to avoid epic proportions. Each story, however, should be decomposed into tasks that accepted to take one and a half or two days to complete. If a story takes more time, then you start to feeling yourself you're doing a conventional software development, actually. So if you have uh, longer stories or long, longer sprints, it becomes to extend, expand itself as a traditional method, actually. So the more simple uh, and uh, easy chunks that you can create, the better software or the more easy software you could be able to uh, productively create as well. So as we see, we inspect and adapt in the review. So we have the sprint execution and we need to have a potentially shippable product increment, not the product itself perhaps, but an increment of the product that uh, the customer can inspect. And based on this uh, piece of, of executable product, uh, we can inspect and adapt. Uh, what happens next will be de depending on our shippable product increment. Well, a typical story in four to 16 hours, like an epic story that would require more uh, to complete. So there would be a release plan and there would be some epics for release planning consideration. But normally, as you see here in the example, you see sprint one, sprint two, and sprint three, and there would be several different stories that are embedded in these buckets. And what you need to do is, uh, and uh, you need to pay, uh, put them in proper and uh, the same paces. One important thing about the Agile, uh, as you might remember from the pr best practices from the XP, extreme programming, is uh, you need to have a constant pace. This means that sprint one, sprint two, and sprint three should be on the same size. Like it's, we cannot have one sprint for 10 days, then 20 days, then 30 days. So we need to stabilize up saying that we need to have stories of 15 sprints of 15 days per every sprint, which goes for five sprints, let's say. An epic is then a, a, any product backlog item that's too large to be completed in a single sprint. So that is, uh, as you see, there would be some epics that can needs to be uh, pro, uh, developed. So as previously suggested, you need to have uh, a user story uh, not bigger than 13, story points. If you have more than this, you should be carefully execute this story point. Splitting a user story uh, it should be followed by a guideline adapted as follows. So first you start to divide the user story into smaller stories if the smaller stories have different priorities. Split large stories along the boundaries and dependencies. Split, split large stories based upon the operations. So, and then what you can see is you should be able to split large stories into separate, uh, we say create, read, update, and delete operations. It's called CRUD. So remove cross-cutting concerns. You need to avoid the side effects. Ask the customer always uh, if uh, it is acceptable. And split user stories separated by functional or non-functional aspects as well. There would be several other occasions that uh, is used uh, for having the stories to be represented in a board. So here's one example, as you might see, there are the releases, as you see, the first release and the backbone and the sequence, the follow order uh, of following order uh, can be visible. And there is a less optional and more optional stories based on the optionality. And the second release probably uh, less important than the first part than the third part. So it goes further like this and the sequence of stories can be uh, released with respect to different forms. This is a story map actually. So you can use this one or you can use any kind of agile board or any other board such as Kanban board or Scrum board. This is fully customizable. Nobody can force you to use 
that one or this one or the other one. This is not really important. All important thing is for you and your team is to have the product, uh, have a uh, product increment ready after the sprint, after the end of the sprint. That is important. So normally, uh, I do research on games. Uh, one reason for this is that I would like to in integrate uh, some games or some other innovation games to the uh, every aspect of software development. Here are some examples of games that you can see, uh, which can easily integrate it in some parts of the agile software development. But still, I'm not going to go into the details of these games. You can check by the slides and the other stuff. So this is called War Room, actually. So as you see, a team have meetings here. And uh, the important thing about this room is you see everything will be on the boards on all over the room, which means that if a kind of a middle manager goes into the room, could be able to see everything without asking the team. That could be quite helpful when you're working. And then it is more easy for everyone to show, make everything visible and revealed. At this point, you, uh, there wouldn't be someone who is not doing something and you don't know about this. This is quite important in software development because you can't really control everything that easily. Therefore, you need to understand that there would be several problems uh, through the way. And sometimes developers can be lazy to do something and you don't really re recognize what's going on. Here, the room helps us quite constantly, actually. And here you see a scrum board. We have a backlog to do in progress, in review and done parts, as you see. And this board is a customized based on the user stories. And there are some colors, as you might see, these colors could represent anything. Uh, could be the uh, practitioner's uh, colors, could be uh, the priority of the tasks, could be the complexity of the task, could be uh, could re represent one of the releases. But most importantly here, this is fully customizable first. The other thing is, after every scrum board uh, should be set up for uh, the base on the sprint. So each, uh, you just represent a single sprint uh, here uh, based on your scrum board. But if you use a Kanban board, then you can uh, reveal or you can show all the phases at once. So as you see, this is a kind of another example. There is uh, the not started in progress and finished. This is very common in both boards in Kanban, Scrum or any other boards. You see people's pictures here. You see several stories with story points. And there is a parking lot in there. So in the parking lot, there are some tasks which are parked there, which means that uh, that should be taken under consideration, not in the uh, daily stand-up meeting, which is only have 15 minutes, and which only uh, is done to see how the progress is going on. So it means that what you have done previously, what you are doing and what you are planning very briefly. You just need to know about these things apart from the other stuff. So scrum boards could have the story to do in progress, verify and done, but this is all fully customizable depending on the team's decisions. So in order to keep any kind of daily scrum meeting short, any topic that starts a discussion is cut short and added to the parking lot, as I mentioned previously and discussed in greater depth after the meeting between people and affected issues. So here's an electronic form. So story to do in progress and done. This is uh, taken from an uh, electronic screenshot, uh, which could be Jira or something else, which can hold our tasks, uh, which everyone could be able to connect and see how the things are going on. Uh, but most of the time in the industry, what we have is we usually have either this one is projected uh, on a screen or somewhere. We want a concrete and visible board on the uh, war room or somewhere that everyone could be able to see everything. That makes things more transparent, actually. If you don't see these things, it's if it's in a computer in somewhere, it wouldn't. Therefore, uh, either I would recommend to have a real board uh, with the real things on the top of this, or either have a digital board which should be reflected in somewhere. So that's all for this lecture.